Good morning. We're back. Man, it's a big week coming up, huh? No more vacations, no more Thanksgiving. My book's finally in stock for those of you that are been waiting. I'm really sorry. I, I got to tell you, it's so not like me to be so back ordered and not order enough books and everything else. But um, there's a great special on BrandonSnyder.com. If you buy this book, you get the balls book free. But more importantly, Brian Eisenberg, we're going to talk about a very sensitive subject today. I have Brian Eisenberg with me. Um, be like Amazon. A lot of stuff written and talked about Amazon. I, I spent the whole weekend talking not only about Amazon, but about the future of this country and retail and what it's going to take. Can this country rebound? Is Amazon taking what we knew and what we felt uh, to go and spend a day shopping? Is, is it over? And... Um, this is a big concern of mine. I mean, as much as I love Amazon and they do a lot of things to make our lives easy, but then your neighbor, by the way, and in the retail market in your particular town is going out of business because nobody's going into the stores anymore. Anyway, nice to see you, Brian. How are you? It's uh, good to be here. Right, right out of the <laughs> gate, like be like Amazon. Like, why'd you write this book? So um, about four or five years ago. Um, well, actually, let me take you even further back. When I first started in the online industry back in the you know mid '90s, I was not a huge fan of Amazon. We didn't think they would succeed. You know, we weren't buying into the hype. And over the years, I just keep, kept seeing them get more market share, more market share, more market share. And needed to really to understand why. And so, as I started diving into it, I started realizing that there's these four pillars of success that we talk about in the book that really drove their success. Four pillars of success. In retail, if you have a retail business of any business, actually, of any business, okay. because I think if you know if you if you think about not even Amazon, but you think about Jeff Bezos, right? You know, he's got. I'm trying be, not to think about Jeff. Let, Bezos yeah, let's not right think now. about him this week. But yeah, um, you know, he's he's been successful in business, yeah. the business services. He's been successful for what he's done with the Washington Post. He turned that profitable. So it's a system of thinking, like an operating system, that's just different based on where customers are today. And I think he's just done a great job at looking at that. And so. We, we knew that these four pillars were something because uh, Amazon's recruiters sent out a link to the article I had written about it to one of my friends who was applying for a job there. And I'm like, okay, so I must be on the, on the right track. But then I wanted to know, well, do those four pillars apply to every business and every size business? And so that's why we had to write this book. We, we wanted to find whether big business, small business, solopreneur, doesn't matter. These four principles are always going to be uh, defining the way business is going to be. We'll get into the these principles in a minute. Did Amazon appreciate and show you love for writing this book? Um, I, I, I wish they would have shown more, but no. Um, other than the fact that the first day it showed it as being out of stock, which didn't really help very much on the launch when they had thousands sitting in their warehouse was that a message it might have been a message. i, think I don't so. know i, I don't know everybody know. doesn't think that i mean i think but but, I, li but life sent you signals for a reason i don't know you're right that's crazy you, by the way talk I about to hear who's your favorite retailer if you're out there tell me your favorite retailer we're gonna give away a copy of this book we'll give away two copies of the book i'm gonna give away my copy too um tell me who your favorite retailer is and why or tell me about a retailer that went out of business and you're crying about that they shouldn't have um, and we're going to give away these two books and we'll throw a gift card in for Steiner as well. I want to hear from you. Tell me who your favorite retailer is. Tell me like what your, your sense is. Of, well, first of all, who's this book for? Is this for somebody who's in retail? Is this for a consumer to better understand how Amazon works and how we can juggle our own, uh, our own process for spending money? I think anybody who, who thinks about Amazon as their competitor, which should be just about every business today, um, you know, they're willing to go into banking, into insurance. I mean, I, I think they're going to buy a car company in, in the near future and eventually compete there. So I, I think any business who has customers who are Amazon customers needs to read the book. Let's, let's be honest, because at the end of the day, every customer in the world, I'm sure your customers as well, expect you to have the speed and efficiency of Amazon. And I feel like the first sellout was UPS and FedEx. Like, here we are. We supported those two shipping companies, and they sold us out. They gave them preferable shipping, cut down their costs, and then hence put pressure on us where, where shipping was actually a profit module for us, or at least a break even. Yep. It's now a very serious cost in my business. Yeah, no. We're not talking about a few dollars here. Yeah, and, and, and that's right? why they're disrupting that business as well. And so I think when you understand – why Amazon has become so dominant because it's very rare in any industry. You know, you, you're, you're a big student of, 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 of history and business, particularly entrepreneurs. It's very hard to have more than 30% market share. Yet Amazon is getting 50% of every e-commerce dollar today. 
Oh. <laughs> it, that's just, it's just unheard of. And so we, and, we need to and, understand and, why. And, 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 they're, and they're probably entitled to more if you were basing it on price and service. And, and the millions of SKUs that they go through. I mean, it's just insane. The, the problem is, and, and I, I had a, a friend of mine who left Amazon a number of years ago, and I asked him, I said, you know, is Amazon really just that good? And he said, no, the problem is most retailers are really just that bad. Really? Yeah. Now, are, are you a fan of Amazon taking over the world, or are you a fan of retailers getting better? I, I think there's a little bit of both. So at the end of the day, I'm a big fan of, look, I am a fan of the convenience. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I was, I was looking to buy uh, some batting gloves for my, glo- for my son for the upcoming season. I went onto the, the brand's website. I had just seen them at the American Baseball Coaches Association. And which, which batting gloves did you I'm, buy? I, I'm not going to say. I'm Why? Not gonna say. Did you get the Franklin? Or no, no, no. Actually, G-Form. Have you seen the G-Form No, gloves? I haven't seen the G-Form. So they, they have this uh, padding on the back of it. So when it impacts, oh, really? it, you can't get hurt. And my, my son is one of those really big kids. Okay. Uh, he's 13 years old. He's like 205 pounds. I'm always one. loyal to Franklin. It was one of my first I, clients. And, and they also, like, they invented the batting glove, they, almost seems like. We've always had Franklins yeah. beforehand. But yeah. he tried some other of okay. the, of the G-Form you products. Like, you know, that's cool. And so decided to go did there. Did they have a good selection, by the way? They have. They just have a few gloves because um, they tend to be a little light on the sports thing. Amazon, they, they're a little light. I feel like they don't take sports though that seriously. They don't take it as seriously as others. But yeah. uh, but I went ahead and I looked at the gloves on Amazon. And I look and I was getting ready to buy it on on the retailer site, this brand site, and they had a, a sale going on. And at the end of the day, it was a twenty cent difference between the two of them. Amazon's regular price to G Form's price on the website. And I decided not to buy it from G Form because I know that Amazon's going to deliver it to me in two days. And G Form, I had no idea when they were going to ship it out. And it's just that simple. It's like, you know, you, you have to be, uh, you have to understand customers' expectations today. And I always like to say that customers have very simple expectations. One, they expect you to communicate kind of like a Zappos. They want you to, when they get on the phone, that you're, the, you're a good friend and you're trying to help them out. They want the seamlessness of an Uber or a Lyft, right? Here's the car, get in, get out, I'm done. And they want that speed and efficiency of Amazon. And so if your business can't figure out how to do that, um, Amazon is going to unfortunately roll over you and find a way or, or other n- new startups. I mean, we've seen disruption all over the place. What's the most important part of this book? What's the most important message would you say that's in this book? Um, I'm going to go to chapter 10 um, and I'll come back to Simon Sinek's book and about um, and, and, and back to your book. Right. And, and, and having a purpose. And I think what happened with most retail today is that their goal was only to move product and not have a purpose behind why they exist, right? As, as opposed to, when you look at Steiner memorabilia, there's a purpose why you exist and why your, your products get purchased. You're tying them to, to emotions and to events and to, and, and, and to people. And a lot of retail is just about pushing products. And you know what? Anybody can push products. I don't, I don't need an emotional connection to buy from Amazon. Um, if you don't listen to your customers or if you don't differentiate yourself, you're only headed in one area. That, that, mediocracy and maybe out of business yeah and and, yeah. and, and, and so th- i mean that's and that's and that's the first pillar right the first pillar is just to be customer centric it's really to understand your customer um and the problem is that everybody thinks they're customer centric there was a bain study a few years ago uh and they interviewed all these executives from like 360 companies and they said okay are you are, do you believe you're customer centric and 96 percent of them agreed I, I, I can't imagine who the four percent are then they asked them 80% of these guys believe they were exceptional at customer centricity. But when they asked their same customers, only 8% wow. agreed. So there's a big gap in that experience. So I don't think the guys are, are being, or, or and gals are being foolish or, or, or they're being naive. I think they're trying to be customer centric. I think the problem is that most businesses, the way we've grown in the past is we grew by adding departments and management and layers and all of this. And Amazon today operates as lots of little mini startups. All the data flows real quickly. And at the end of the day, it's about data and understanding your customers. And today we have all the tools, whether you're a big business or small business, to understand your customers. What makes Amazon almost unbeatable right now? They've built a lot of moats. And, and what's, the be- what's the best shit that they do, though? I, I think it's all the cloud stuff, to be honest with you. It's not even the retail. You know, that's funding a lot the da- of the, the data. The data, yeah. And, they just and know everything. They just know everything. And, and look, you know, when, when you when you buy a Kindle book and you highlight things in there, when you watch on Amazon Prime and you watch shows, they're learning about who you are, right? And I think uh, I, I've been telling retailers They're this. doing the same thing Facebook's doing, frankly, but they don't take any heat about it. 
Well, but, they, but they're doing it for a, a different purposes, and it comes back to to why you do things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and a little bit of their ethics. I, you know, Jeff Bezos in '94 said he wanted to be Earth's most customer centric company, and I don't think he did it because he's a woo woo kind of guy. I think he realized, look, we can serve customers different. It, like the same way Sam Walton uh, reinvented retail back in the day, right? And unfortunately, if you read Sam Walton's book uh, Made in America, and you look at Walmart today, you'd have a hard time seeing that they're still aligned with the same values. That, that he talked about in his book. You know, they talked about taking care of their associates. Can Walmart make it, though? You know, can, uh, can they give Amazon a run for their money? Do you feel that they've got a legitimate, I know they're in second place. They remind me of Miller versus Budweiser. I mean, they're in a good place, but can they be in, the, uh, in, in a relevant place? I think they can. Look, at the end of the day, uh, you know, people are still going to walk into stores. I mean, we are. But you've got to make it interesting you got to make it a little bit fun you ca it can't look dark and dreary and you know not have the products on the shelves that you're expecting and have people who are rude to you and or, or not even be able to find people uh, and that's on low-cost items you, you know i i see this on you know high-end furniture stores where you can't find sales people who can answer questions yeah i mean no it's, a, it's a problem what do you think retailers have to do today give me give me a couple things that retailers need to do quickly if they want to stay in business I think this is the year, and 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 I'm uh, you know I'm here. Uh, 2019. Hold on, drum roll. Yeah. And by the way, don't forget, I want to hear from your favorite company, or your favorite company that's not in business anymore that you need to have back. But we're, we're gonna give away a couple of books in a minute. But so I, I'm sitting here um, at the National Retail Federation conference here in the Javits Center. Thirty-five thousand people here at the conference. I was here again last year as well, the year before that. And I'm listening to it, not much has changed. Everyone's talking about the same things. They're talking about AI and innovation and, and experiences. Everyone's saying the same buzzwords. And I think at the end of the day, retail, period, is about relationships. It's about caring about people. It's about being of service to people, right? Um, and, and, and giving them a reason why they want to buy. Because people love to buy. They hate to be sold, but we love to buy, right? And they're so focused in on advertising and spending fortunes on advertising. And advertising really is just a tax for being unremarkable. There's no question. You know, if you have <laughs> if you have a bunch of shit to sell, then go advertise it. That's because right. The truth is in the obvious. You know, the obvious is in the in the truth and the simplicity. Yep. And uh, if you can promote that and get the word out there, that moves people. And 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 I talk about I it in the book as well. And I think you know you've done a great job at this with your business. It's like you know what? It's just about being a little bit innovative. Uh, you're selling dirt, dirt. No, we are selling bricks too. Well, by the bricks way. too. Everybody but ignores the bricks. That's a sexy brick. By I, the it way. is a sexy brick. From you don't see those red bricks anymore. That's approaching. I know. That's approaching a hundred-year-old brick from the original Yankee Stadium. I, I remember. I remember cool. reading in the book. Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. You got to be a little innovative. Yeah, and, and no it's questions. not just selling the dirt by itself, but right, you've turned it into pens with with the logos on there. You've put you've put it the, the map of all uh, of all the stadiums on there, and it's like if you can take dirt and make it into an experience and make it something that people are excited by. That little bit of innovation makes people part with their money. And that's what retail is about. You're, you're connecting them to something. And the problem is we, we have so many products, pro products being flooded from China all the time. They're not very good. Make some great products. I mean, uh, look, there's, there's a brand on Amazon. I love to talk about uh, the two of them, actually, that have built their brands on Amazon. And people talk about all of them. They're almost cult-like. Uh, Instant Pot. If, if you haven't seen those, those pressure cookers, they've done an amazing job. Huge brand. Now they're in every single retail location, uh, just about. just about. And Anchor, right, with the, those, all those little cables and chargers and stuff oh, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Anchor, and, and simple they, product. A simple product, but they've just, they're constantly focused on, they're, they're, the day something launches, they've got product ready for you. And it's just being able to keep ahead of the customers. But how do you think, like, you know, be like Amazon, I don't know. I go on Amazon and, and you, know, you get you see reviews, and obviously you get a choice. You feel like you know you're probably in the price range, but yep. I don't feel the, the experiential part of it all. I mean, they don't have videos. There's no video there, at all. There, no, there's some, but they're definitely doing more of yeah. that. So they're they're slow to come. Um, yeah, they are out of stock on a lot of things. They tend to be out of stock on a lot of things. Um, what what? Can they keep up with this kind of width and depth? I mean, can they maintain this kind of width and depth? And what happens if something goes wrong? You know, where they're at, with it, with their online. What happens if their website goes down or something? I mean, what happens? Yeah, they're, 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 it's only gone down a couple 
times for a small period of time. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it takes down a big part of the internet when, when they go down. I mean, think about Twitter and Netflix are all run on the Amazon cloud, you know, part of the CIA. So putting a lot of eggs in that basket putting a lot scary. of scary. But, 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 but 20 years, and look, and, and they, they've so far, you know, look, Sears was the same way, but, you know, back 100 years ago. And, does it and break your heart to see Sears go out? It does. But them and, you know, you might, and we'll talk about iconic retailers from Brooklyn boys. Man. Remember Reds? Oh, man, Reds or, or Robert Hall. I always say Robert Hall. Robert threw it out. We hauled it in. In. But it was a good little <laughs> department store, you know, good prices, you know. But, I mean, it is, it is scary to see what's now transforming. And I'm worried about supermarkets even. Well, you know, but you're going to get to the point there's a lot of push on Walmart and there's a lot of push on Amazon to control where we buy our food from. Are we going to lose the local butcher market? I, I, no, I don't think so. They're, again, they're going to have to do some different things, absolutely, to, to create, you know, because a lot of the everyday convenience. Because that's the thing that people don't understand about Amazon. Um, it's not about the experience. The experience is I can sit in my underwear <laughs> and with a couple of clicks, I have stuff shipped to my house at any time, at any moment. The same day. The, the same day. I, 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 I'll never forget the story. My, my, my daughter was, uh, I think he, she had gotten her first cell phone. She was 13 years old. And uh, uh, it was pouring cats and dogs in Austin that day. And uh, she didn't, she didn't want to buy a case from you know, from the uh, from Verizon at the point. So she said she'll go, just go on Amazon and order something because she wanted, of course, a pretty color and all of that, right? So she goes ahead and she finds Amazon Prime now. They had just launched there. And it's less than an hour later, she's got this and she takes a picture of it, puts it on her social media and she has her new best friend. Those were her words. And I'm like, that's the future and it's like how do you keep up with how her and be with that she's gonna be you know she's she's gonna be 18 this year she's going off to college she's gonna be having her own it's like where's she going to school uh we don't know oh, yet we don't know yet, right? we don't know yet. We're, right. we're keeping fingers crossed she's either gonna come back here or in texas it's one of the two i mean you know you keep saying i like that her. that austin that texas austin is a great school but it's got the wrong color like syracuse <laughs> That's it got does. the right orange. Yeah, it's, it's a different orange. A different orange. I was trying to tell my daughter that. She didn't listen. Um, but, you know, she loved Austin. You, you, you feeling Austin? Are you feeling like, what, is it all the hype true for you? I was, I was very concerned about moving to Austin initially. Um, when you did know, you move? I, I, I moved there seven years ago. So, you know, I'm going to be 49. So I born and raised. I lived in two That's zip codes my whole move, life. big move, man. That's when my daughter moved seven years ago. That's a big move. It's a big move. We put the whole family aboard, three kids, and I got to tell you, it's been the best thing we ever did uh, for, for all the kids. But, you know, for my son, who's the baseball player, he's got two seasons now, which is, makes a very big difference. Young, vibrant. Yep. It's a well, great I community. Lots that. of action going on. Um, just the people are really friendly. But, but, I, but you can't get good that pizza. Kind of move you and your, your four, your heart, a lot of people are so hesitant to pick up and just move to another part that maybe makes more sense. What made you give you that get up and go? Um, if, if you Google it, you could probably still find stories of it. But we were being harassed by our landlords here. Um, and we had to get into a truck, and we were looking for where to go. And uh, my brother had moved down there previously. I mean, we've been going down there for years. So you, had a little, you had a little insight. I had a little incentive to kind of leave. And if I was going somewhere, and we were looking at the housing stock, and we said, you know what, if we're gonna, if we're gonna leave Brooklyn, um, you never leave Brooklyn. Let me just yeah, yeah, it's always that. in the heart. You, you absolutely, know, nobody ever leaves Brooklyn. Everything starts and everything starts to end, uh, initiates in Brooklyn. I'm sure everybody out there understands that. Right, here's another great yeah. example, right? Because, again, coming from Brooklyn, pizza. I can't get good pizza in Austin. You can't get pizza anywhere, really, not compared to Spumoni Gardens. Oh, Spumoni, Spumoni Gardens. I was, I mean, I was showing Jack a picture of my— Spumoni Gardens is not the best pizza on the planet. Anybody actually want to tell me they've got something better than Spumoni Gardens? I mean, that dough is so light. So oh, full. Absolutely. I mean, you know, look. But you look at a Spumoni Gardens, you look at the DeFaris, you look at a Totonos. They're all great pizzerias, oh, so you right? You got your pizza down, man. Yeah, I got my pizza you down. I, I told my kids well, too. But here, but here's the thing, right? I grew up right by Kings Highway. Remember the pizza, the pizzeria underneath the train station? That Armando's, place, you mean? On 16th was a, Street? Or yeah, on 16th Street. Yeah, Armando's. Yeah. Oh, one slice was a meal. That's how. Yeah. That and an egg cream. But I mean, it wasn't the best oh, pizza. Oh, man, I didn't get my egg cream yesterday. You didn't get I knew cream. I forgot something. I was in this diner. They had egg creams on it, which is a rarity. I didn't get Today. my egg cream. Son of a gun. Um, it wasn't the best of the pizzas, but it was a good, solid slice. And it was always busy because you came off the train and you grabbed the slice. And so it's the same with retail, right? If, you, if you're in the right location, sometimes you're going you're gonna to pick up those things. You can have memorable experiences like an L&B or a, a Totono's, and you're going to be incredibly busy, right? But then you look at something like Domino's, and you're like, so why is Domino's even – why are people buying Domino's? Like in New York – 
pizza's not that good. The pizza's not that good, but they've innovated with their technology. They've made it really simple and quick, and that's how they've succeeded. And so it's just understanding there are different customers for different reasons, and when you connect your values and your purpose to what you're trying to do to your customers, that's that's where success comes from. I like that. That that that's a tweetable that's a tweetable <laughs> quote. But it's true. It's like listen to your customers and then create that emotion, create the products and, you, and everything geared on what your customers are telling you. You probably have a home run. Some people just want it and they want it now. That's right. And, and they don't, they don't need and they don't need it. the and they don't need the best. They just yeah. want it. Yeah. At this point, my pizzas. You know, I'm, I, if I'm eating the best pizza, I'm not having it. You know, at, at this point, Th that's the way I feel. It's yeah. like un unless I feel that way with French fries too. By the way, like if you don't, if you're not giving me the best fries, if you haven't. You know, really, really, I mean, that, that frozen, nah. Yeah, no, we, we, we've hit a different age. Too many calories. Yeah, I, I realized after yeah. after 40 that, yeah, if it's not the best, it's just not worth splurging. I, I only recently helping. realized that, you know, French fries are not really like eating a potato, like a vegetable. They're not, it's unfortunately. Not, I mean, yeah, yeah, eating French fries is not eating a vegetable, yeah. It's no. not, not the same. Uh, any questions, Ben? Uh, some that are just more on the personal end um, sure. for you. What are, what's some of the best advice you've ever received and who gave it to you? Oh, wow. There's been a lot of great advice over the years. Um, as you say, you know, it's, it's about the people you surround yourself with and the mentors that, that, that you get. It, it, it's, it's, so, it's so critical. Um, I'd say my co-author, uh, Roy Williams, um, who... Um, That's not Roy Williams, the basketball No, it's coach. not, even though he owns the RHW and Roy Williams domain. So I'm sure that, you know, they oh probably boy. want to hook up. Um, but we can, we can make that happen. But, but Roy, no, Roy, Roy's not letting it go. Roy... Um, Roy has a advertising business in Austin, 31 acres in the Hill Country, where half of it he's built into a school, which we'll talk about in the book a little bit. Uh, that's a uh, not-for-profit uh, kind of school, and he has a quote that I've oh, I've tried to live by for the last number of years, which is the price of clarity is the risk of insult. I like that. Um, I and like that. You, you know what? Being born from Brooklyn, we're just we're gonna sh shoot straight. We're gonna tell you exactly what we think, and uh, it's it's both helped and hurt at times. Uh, I've learned to be a little kinder and gentler in my uh, in my old yeah, age. Yeah, absolutely. In Austin, especially, the people are so nice there. Is there another book coming? Uh, is, was this your first book, or this is my sixth book? Actually. Sixth book. Sixth book. Well, give me a little bit of a synopsis on, on your best one of the, of the first five. The most popular book was "Waiting for Your Cat to Bark." What was that about? That was a uh, so th a funny story on that one. We uh, we actually had the title before we had the book. Um, and uh, we had sold the publisher on the title and we had to come back and we went to a hotel on, on Long Island, my brother and I and finally came up with a story of if Pavlov had done his experiment with cats as opposed to dogs, advertising would be very different today. Um, and unfortunately, most advertise most businesses think if they ring the bell of advertising, customers are just going to respond just like the dog does. But in fact, Customers are a lot more fickle like cats. Uh, they're just not going to come just because they feel like coming anymore. And so you kind of have to understand the, cu the cat's really in control. You're, you're not, and the customers can control I don't the think there's ever been a more difficult time in, in figuring out how to create customer activity. You know, you, <laughs> you could sponsor, and you could do all these things. You can do podcasts and, and shows. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, getting people to respond and activating people is – incredibly difficult you know we're so, and, we're and, and there so is distracted. no amount of money that could buy it yeah we're just so distracted today and and, and, and tough also because okay. you're not buying into especially now like uh you're not just buying into something that's just kind of cute and you got reviews you could click and pick you can compete i mean i can just while i'm sitting here i can go and shop you 15 ways to sunday to get the cheapest price for this book yeah so, you know and, and everything else as opposed to going into a store and you kind of feel like you're at the, you know, you're kind of at the back of the call. You're, you're, you're at the mercy of the customer in a lot of ways. And it, it's why you have to work so hard today m more than ever before. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it feels like you're going on the top. I, I like to talk about a kind of like a, a science equation. I, so back in my days before I was uh, in, in marketing, I, I would teach science in some pr private schools. Um, and uh, it's friction, right? Friction either, you know, when you're removing it from the customer and it doesn't go away, it has to go somewhere. Unfortunately, it goes on us as the brand and retailer that we've got to figure out what to do with all that extra friction that we're removing from the customer side of the equation. Yeah, people, people want to have a voice now. They want to weigh in. You've got to be on top of your game with the price. You had better have... And, and the either, shipping? Either, unless you're... And the shipping, well, that's, you know, that's uh -huh. got to be convenient, but... I think, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't have the absolute best product with nothing in second place, you had better be on your price game. Well, I mean, it, it was funny. Uh, a couple of days ago, I posted on Facebook a video of my son. So uh, last week, he was throwing a bullpen. And uh, he's gotten so tall that uh, he was Now, where is he pitching? Uh, no, he's still, he's still in eighth grade. 
Where's he pitching? Is it for the school or for uh, uh, no club travel? teams? Club, club teams, teams, yeah. How uh, fast is he throwing? Mid seventies already. Oh, so he's got some. So he's he's into it. Oh yeah, he's into it. But you know, six one two oh five, size fourteen shoes, big kid. So he, he's throwing off the uh, off the mound and he rolls his ankle coming off the mound. He wasn't kind of paying attention. Anyway, we're that next day we're supposed to head up to the American Baseball Coaches Association in Dallas. So we're driving up, wake him up in the morning. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to walk. Gets up, doesn't look really good. A few minutes later, he says, let's go. He walked the next two days. So I post a video. A few days later, he had a basketball game for his school, and he played. Five days later, got a chiropractor adjustment, did a little voodoo floss on there, put a little uh, stem, the Mark Pro, and he, he played, I mean, competitively. And so there's a video of him where he's going ahead and he's saving the ball and then gets underneath, gets the, the, uh, the ball down um, underneath, uh, dishes it off to his buddy, so gets the assist for the basket. And I said, not bad considering it was five days from having a sprained ankle. I post this on Facebook. Next thing I know, I get an ad on Facebook for compression socks for people who sprain their ankles. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a look at this. And I click through and I see the whole thing. It's kind of cool. I'm like, okay, it makes it interesting. They have a little video explaining it. And then I get to the add to cart part and it says, yeah, three to four weeks shipping. And I'm like, see you later. And why advertise, right? If so they, they had the right, product, I, they had the right idea on the on the chase. Yeah, because I would have put him yeah. the next on pair the redirect. Of good idea on yeah. the redirect. Wow! But, but they totally, totally missed it. And it's yeah. a, it, it, that's what people miss. It's that one little thing you know what's that funny throws it is, off. About eight years ago, we had a huge problem with shipping here at Steiner. I mean, what a debacle! And I didn't know what to do. And we really, uh, we were getting our auction platform to another level. So, and it was just, so, I mean, it wasn't a day we go by to get a complaint. Not a day, multiple complaints a week. And I said, you know something? It's enough of this. This is bullshit. We're not going to have a customer service department anymore. We're going to have a customer service company. Yep. Everyone is now responsible for customer service. And I put in this 48-hour rule. So I said, unless something's happening that's not in our control, like if Mariano there is not signing till three weeks from now, then obviously we can't deliver that in 48 hours. Yep. But anything that we have in stock reason, yeah. has to be, if somebody's ordering it, if it's not for a future signing, has to be 48 hours. And just by luck, because, I mean, we, because we were growing so fast, we couldn't keep up with the shipping. And then, you know, I said, look, 48 hours, that's it. I don't want to hear it. And then we've been kind of pretty much on that program now, which I don't even know why 48 hours. I know that's Amazon Prime, too. But, you know, something the best thing I ever did. Because, you know, I, maybe I get a complaint every few months. And and, and, and and that's no, and, but that's normal. Like no one's expecting yeah. you to be flawless. It's amazing, though. I mean, but you know, you got as as somebody out there. If you're in retail, you have to take action. Well, in any you can't today, hope that it's going to work out in any business today. And that's and I think you 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 put it exactly. It. Everybody's in charge of customer service. Everybody in the company is in charge of marketing. All of operations is marketing today, and that's the whole point. It's like customers going to touch you, and you never know where if your bathroom is dirty. Okay, they're going to have an impression of and your they're business. they're taking pictures of the box when they open it and everything else. I said, listen, every one of your customers, to make it simple, make believe it's your mom. Would you send this shit to your mom? If your mom called with a complaint, would you just send her off to some extension and hope that somebody else picked up? You know your mom would have beat your butt in. So, you kidding me? By the way, so the, it, it, <laughs> I, I'm working on a next book, um, and that is probably the number one thing we found over the last 20 years of helping companies is the systemic growing pains, essentially, right? Uh, it's these system errors with either people or policy or, or, or technology where you're growing, 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 and what got you there beforehand all of a sudden feels like, you know, like you're driving on the road and the tire's a little off and you're kind of bouncing around. So I'm in this hotel, right? I mean, I was doing a speaking engagement on Saturday for this uh, – um, you know, Joe Soto, he has this like mastermind yep. thing. I'm in Virginia and I'm at the desk and this kid comes up to me. I, I was like in the lobby talking to some of people at the conference and just talking about issues and stuff. And this kid walks up to me and goes, you know, Mr. Stein, I've been following you forever. And do you think you can help me out and pay for my room? I used all my money to come to this mastermind. Okay. So, yeah, you know, I will help you. So I go to the front desk. I said, listen, what's the lowest rate? You know, I want to try to help this young man out and uh, I'm going to pay for the room. So, well, we don't have the lowest rate. I'm like, but the conference is here. You have rooms. It's 11 o'clock at night. You're not going to give me the lowest rate? He goes, no. You believe this idiot calls up another hotel next door and sends us to another hotel for a lower rate and wouldn't match the, wouldn't match the corporate rate that the, that the mastermind got. 
and, and you know, I'm happy to do the good for, for so I'm happy to help the kid. I know he f- drove all the way from Michigan to go to Yeah, that's Michigan. impressive. And, yeah. You know, I always say, you know, I'm, he, I'm he not was trying willing, to find a way. Yeah, I'm not willing to help somebody who's not willing to help themselves. Yeah. If you're going to help yourself, I'm all about helping you. I, I love helping you if you're going to help yourself. But can you believe this hotel manager? But, I said, guys like this can put that hotel out of business. But that, but that happens all the time, right? It's a systems error where all of a sudden what happens is that the only people who can make decisions are the hippos, as my friend likes to call it, the highest paid person's opinion, right? The, the, the bosses I and the managers. I love that. Love and, that. And the problem is that, every, like, you know, if you call Zappos or go to a Ritz Carlton, I promise you, they would have taken care of it like that. It's not even, then you don't even have to think about it because they've given everybody authority to take care of customers. And that you have to do that in today's business too. The difference is in the past, you know, when you had a big company, it was very hard to find out if someone did something. It might take you weeks to find out. But today, with the amount of analytics that you can have in a company, the amount of data that flows through it, the emails, there's there's no excuse. You could say, hey, you know what? I had to give this kid this. This was the story. And I'm sure the manager would say, yeah, sounds great. Yeah, but he wasn't willing brainer. to take a risk, and that's yeah. part of their culture. And, and that's unfortunate. Better than anybody else? Uh, anything out there that we want to talk about? You yeah, want to give away one of the books? We were asking about uh, different businesses that either that people love or, or that they loved and, and would love to come back. So somebody, um, Daniel, had mentioned arcades um, and how that business has changed. As the so more, no more pinball games, changed. no more. There's there, there's a there's a few a places few. in Austin. The main yeah. event is one of the, the they have in Austin where it's a lot of pinball games and laser tag and kids got all these games golf. on their phones now. Yeah, that are they better. can have it at, at any time. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's, uh, you know, people go there for parties and they, they have bowling. They kind of do it. Yeah, you know what? Can they find more interesting ways to do it? it it's funny because at the NRF conference um, this week, the closing keynote is Chip and Joanna Gaines from, um, you know, from uh, Magnolia um, up in Waco, Texas. And I've been there a couple times. And, and I, I think they've done a great job at also rethinking business as it is today. Look, they started with great content, right? Their show. Um, you go to their store and in the back, I don't even talk about the store because the store has got all the kind of cool things, but in the back, they have this huge yard where they have all these food trucks sitting around. Um, and they have lawn games and people come out there and they spend the day with their kids and they've just, look, they put Waco on the map for something that hasn't been for years and it's such a terrible reputation. They've totally changed it. And, And I'm actually looking forward as, as them for, as closing keynotes. Uh, for the for the retailers, I think again, you know what, they've packed it all together. Really understand smart. their customers. They've done it's a great smart. job. I, I at did it. a talk for the uh, gaming amusement industry uh, conference. It was in Dallas a couple mm-hmm. of years ago, and you know they are. You see the ones that are hanging in there. You go there, and it's a, it's it's a lot of fun. You know they've upgraded their food, but you, know, you used to go to these amusements and you get the Absolutely. frozen pizza. Now they they understand you got to have better food. You got to have more well, dynamic like prizes. Yeah, like exactly. ballparks are doing the same yeah. thing. I mean, if the food's not incredibly dynamic. A lot of kids go to the game for the food. Oh yeah, I mean, it, because they're like, I can watch this game. I got a better game on my on my computer. That I can play. So you better have your act together on all those uh, extra stuff. Uh, but who are we giving the book away to, by the way? Um, well, we got a couple of options. So there's somebody that mentioned uh, Blockbuster. Um, wow. Somebody that mentioned Talk the arcades. About it. Bl- See, but bl- bl- Blockbuster just stopped innovating. They stopped listening to their customers. They could have owned Netflix for. Nothing. It was twenty. I think it was twenty-five million dollars or something like that, and they, they could have owned that business. Yeah. I my my first retail experience was working at a video store, right across the street from my house. And jacking people up, if God forbid, if they hand the thing in two hours late. Oh, I hated the, that. Uh, oh, I I always used to rewind for people. I was always kind for them. Like I I I, I never I never penalize. I'm sure my boss Al would be upset with me if he knew that today. But but what's crazy <laughs> is if you're like eleven or twelve years old, you don't even know what a VHS tape is. Yeah. Or a VCR is. Yep. It's unbelievable. I gave my intern a couple cassette tapes. He looked at me like a deer in headlights. Like, what's this? That's a cassette tape. Go get that transfer. Have, he goes, have, where have, would you like me to get that transfer? Nobody has a cassette tape. Have you, have you, have you ever seen the clip of uh, my good friend Scott Stratton, who does the, um, he's a keynote speaker as well, and he talks about millennials with the, with the tape and the pencil. And they don't get, if you haven't seen it, I'll send you the clip. Yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll yeah, appreciate cool. that. Uh, ben, one more. Um, I'll give you two more. Uh, Michael says he loves bows, um, loves the uh, quality of the product. The uh, customer stuff, experience, stuff. Um, and then um, actually, Michael again. He mentioned also Dave and Buster's. He thinks they really stepped up their game in terms of the food they offer, but also making it sort of adult friendly and a arcade destination almost for uh, for adults. Cool. Yeah, I, w- I would agree. They've done a great thing. Bo- 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 Who's your favorite retailer? Wow, um, a couple. You know, I was always a fan of Whole Foods, um, even before Amazon uh, purchased them, um, and. Th- 
it's been interesting to watch being in Austin, which is the ho- the home of home Whole Foods, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and seeing their transi- transition. Um, there was something about walking there and talking to the people, and then telling you about what what was really good and what just came in, and letting them sample things. And that part of the business has sort of like faded out. I, I, there's definitely not not feeling that same way that I used to. There's no question. Um, I will tell you though that at times, especially you know, because I'm juggling around with my kids and ba- the son going to the gym and games and all that, it's kind of nice being able to go on the app and order the stuff that we need and have it delivered to the house and not have to worry about it. Um, uh, just the other day, I was also in Beta. I don't know if you've seen that store. Um, it's an interesting concept. The, every month, their selection changes. Um, every product there is a unique product that they that they've sourced that uh, people are bringing in, and they have little iPads next to it to kind of show all the information about the product. Because I think that's also one of the things that a lot of uh, retailers have missed. And I, I used to call it first screen retail. It's like everybody was worried about the second screen, the computer. Everybody was worried about the third screen, the phone. But they didn't realize if you put screens in the store, I don't have to go to my phone to look up reviews about a vacuum cleaner if I, if you have it right there. And most people don't even do that. I like that. That's smart. And so Beta is doing a great job at kind of integrating both the, the, the screens and the products and being able to experience them and play around with them. And I, I think they're doing an amazing job. I like that. Well, congratulations on this book, Brian. You're sixth. Hopefully we'll be back for the seventh. Be like Amazon. I'm hoping Amazon's giving you some love now. I mean, do you get a quick ship now uh, uh, on this uh, book? Uh, you can get it pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I guess the best place to buy it is on Amazon. It's on not? Amazon, and you can get it on Audible as well, which what's is the, really nice. What's the best? Are you, you like the Audible book. What's the best place to get a hold of you? What's your favorite social? Uh, I'm everywhere. Uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you're not going to find me on Snapchat yet. LinkedIn. I'm, uh, what, what, are you, what are your strongest at? What are, you, what are your number one favorite? So I'll tell you, a favorite spending. So I'm like a LinkedIn guy. I love LinkedIn. It's yeah, easy to. Yeah, yeah. So for business so I want to see who you are, who you know, what you're about. And I can see a little pattern and kind of feel like I could get to know you a little that way as opposed to. Absolutely. So yeah. business-wise, it's more LinkedIn. I, I wish, and I'm starting to see it now. LinkedIn is starting to get a little bit more personal stuff going on. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, but definitely, uh, uh, Instagram is where I'm spending a lot more time lately. And it used to be, it used it to seems be Twitter. Everybody, everybody's all over Instagram. That's big. Instagram, Instagram. Well, you know what? Instagram is just a, it's a positive environment for the most part. You really don't have people yeah. complaining about like politics and all that. And so LinkedIn's been pretty upbeat too. For L- the LinkedIn most has part, been very, know? very upbeat. Uh, I'm just worried about the, uh, you know, I'm just worried about. Who's getting it? You know, when I post it, it seems like it's so... It's very random. So rogue. It's so random. I'm, I'm starting to get frustrated because some of my best, best posts don't get the best on the algorithms. And then some of my okay posts do so much better. And I'm like trying to figure that out. Okay, so Anybody give, out there that can help me figure that I'll, out? I'll give you a couple of tips that I'm finding out. So number one, it's um, uh, short videos. Yeah. Really short video. Video is really where LinkedIn is pushing right now. And they're looking for immediate engagement. So it has to happen like within like the first little bit like the first few minutes uh they want to see people watching that whole video and they want people commenting on it right away and liking it right away ben you got that got it we gotta so, go probably shorter on the videos don't you think drew i got a crack bottom team with these guys i'll tell you we've, we've this is this is an impressive made, operation i mean i I've, I've 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 been on a you know bunch of shows over the years but this is this is super well done oh we're gonna chop you up slice you <laughs> dice you in every which way and 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 mainly because i want them i want people there's definitely people that are gonna be looking for different aspects of what you're talking about in this book and I don't want to drown people. If people have been hanging with us. That's great. But there are parts of this conversation that are going to be perfect for different uh, videos and different plays. I, I like to tell people, say, the book is a memento today. It's not like it, like it's not what it was in the past. Like people used to really love reading. And unfortunately, I, you know, I see it today. I was a former teacher. That's you true. know, I've got kids. They, they don't read the same way they used to. And, and, it, and it's a shame. I mean, you know, they'll probably get there a little bit as they're older and they'll realize the love of, of learning. But we need to find a way to deliver snack bite content and that's that's really what it is and so you know if we can give them a little snack today and another little snack tomorrow maybe they'll go in and they'll listen to the audiobook or or read on the kindle or 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 better yet get a signed copy of the book or something like that which is just you know and, and that gets cherished i mean i like you know I'll, I'll never get rid of any book that had ever been signed to me like you know they mean so much i appreciate that but also did you purposely go i mean it's a little bit of a small shorter book did you purposely do that absolutely that we thinking? did that yeah. absolutely yeah we're every book in the last few has been gotten smaller and smaller our, our first book felt like nine textbooks in one <laughs> and so um we realized again you know what this you can get on a plane and by the time you're off the plane you're done with the book and i think people need that it's like you know um i'm, I'm loving your book i'm about a third of the way through it right now um 
but I wish I had more hours to spend in front of the in front of the screen. To, yeah, to people kind of say it. that to me. It's like, Brian, I'm loving your book, but I probably won't be done with it for a few more weeks till I get a, till I get on another plane or till I'm on another trip or vacation because it's 200 pages. And part of me wanted to make this 100 pages. My next book that I'm working on will be 100 pages, half the book, small, like about this size. And it'll be just one really unbelievable lesson that I'm working on. I, I, I can't wait on yeah. that one. And, and, and audiobook. Um, yeah. I, I listened to my friend Alan Stein's book um, over this past weekend as well. So those, those are the two I've been juggling. And Alan's was an audiobook. And because it was at two, I was able to play it at that one, 1. 1.5 and 2x, I was able to, to get it done. So it was in my uh, fifth book of the year. Uh, so I'm hoping this will be number six. I'll t- hopefully finish this before I get uh, home to, uh, to Austin this week. Brian Eisenberg, Be Like Amazon. And, you know, Pick up a few copies. And if you're a retailer out there, don't be afraid to disrupt your business. Mix it up. Change it up. You know, add more value. Listen to your customers a little more. And it can be done with dirt and bricks. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, it have, doesn't to have to be, have to be anything it, fancy really. technology. But if you're doing nothing, that is a decision and a choice that's probably not going to work out for you. So, you know, get up. Do something. Make your store a little different. You know, my mom always said you got to have balls. Particularly with retail was about how do you make your store interesting every day? How do you make believe like your store is a grand opening every day? It's always an event, yeah. And I think that's the fun of retail. Like, why else would you go into retail if you weren't going to create that excitement and buzz and wow for your customer? Absolutely. So pick up this book. You get a couple good ideas along those lines. And hopefully we're not going to let Amazon take over the world. Are we? Not quite yet. Pick up the book. By the way, if you're waiting for the Living on Purpose book, it's coming soon. Sorry about that. We just got them in. Hang in there. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.